this is Pastor Mike, SDF Kids, and I want to say welcome to our Good Friday service just for you kids out there. So our service today is going to look a little different than our fun, exciting Sunday morning SDF Kids services because Good Friday has a kind of a serious tone about it because we're celebrating a death, right? Why would we want to have a fun and exciting time for death? Death is kind of not fun, but in our case, we are celebrating this death, but in a serious way. So what we're gonna do tonight, we're, we're gonna look at some scripture today, we're gonna sing some songs today, we're just gonna have a good time celebrating this day called Good Friday. Let's think about the word Good Friday. Yeah, today's Friday, but why is it good? Is it because you don't have school today? Maybe. Is it because you got to get some ice cream out of today? I don't know, maybe. Is it because your mom and dad were really nice to you and everything in the world came out puppy dogs and rainbows? Maybe. But let me give you a little hint. Today is Good Friday, not because of those things, even though those things are good. But today's Good Friday because of this guy right here. Not, well, this action figure of Jesus, but because of Jesus and what he did today. So I cannot wait to unpack that with you guys here in a little bit. Today an innocent man was tried. He was found guilty for doing no wrong. Today a king was spit on. Today a man who healed the sick was beaten beyond recognition. On this day, one who spoke greater than the prophets would not speak when accused. There's nothing good in this day. It's an evil day, an unjust day. An unjust day. But when we know what happens next, when we know the end of the story, and we realize that this day had to happen, it becomes the most amazing, most sublime, most incredible day in history then yes, this is a Good Friday, and it's a very good day indeed. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder? Who leaves us breathless in all who wander? The King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is a veiling love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You lay down your life That I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I see you for all that you've done for me to order who makes the orphan a son and daughter the king of glory the king of glory who rules the nations with truth and justice shines like the sun in all of its brilliance the king of glory the king above all kings yeah this is amazing this is a failing love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross 
So who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? Who do you think Jesus is? Now, if you said Jesus is the son of God, you'd be correct, very good. But do you know he's also called the son of man too? Yeah, he's called the son of God and the son of man. In fact, Jesus himself, Jesus, he's actually 100% God and 100% man, which makes him pretty epically awesome. Now my action figure Jesus, he has some really ripped abs and Jesus has some amazing abs because he's a carpenter. Okay, that's what he did for a living. He's a carpenter like his dad. And so he has some amazing ripped abs, abs doing all that hard work. But my action figure Jesus also talks. You guys wanna hear him talk? Love your neighbor as yourself. And he has pretty blue eyes. Here's Jesus right here, yeah. Jesus, the reason he could do miracles is because he's 100% God. But here's the cool thing about him being 100% man. He experiences the same pain, uh, feelings, he suffered, and all that stuff, just like you and me. And it's important he had to, to do all that. It's important he had experienced that. Yeah, Jesus right here, well, not this Jesus, but the real Jesus is up in heaven right now. And he's sitting on the right-hand side of God, and he's up there helping us when we die your friends and family whoever dies up there whoever believes in jesus when they die they get to go to heaven but he's up there because he can tell god that hey i've been there i've done that i understand why he did that he's up there helping us out so jesus is an awesome guy and i'm so thankful for him being 100 percent god and 100 percent man <laughs> Easter is a wonderful feast, and it's not just about bunnies and colored eggs. On Palm Sunday, Christians enter Holy Week. They remember the day that Jesus entered the city of Jerusalem on a donkey, and the crowds welcomed him with palm branches. Maundy Thursday marks the end of Lent and is the first of three holy days called the Paschal Tridium. That day, we remember how Jesus celebrated the Last Supper with his disciples. He washed their feet and told them to follow his example. During the meal, Jesus took bread and said, Take this and eat of it, this is my body. And he shared the cup of wine, saying, This is my blood. On Good Friday, Christians remember how Jesus was taken in front of Pontius Pilate, how he suffered and carried his cross through the streets of Jerusalem and was crucified among criminals. Holy Saturday commemorates the silence of the tomb in which Jesus was laid to rest. During the Easter Vigil and on Easter morning, Christians celebrate that Jesus rose from the dead. The Easter symbolism of eggs, bunnies and flowers mirror this new life of the resurrection. Happy Easter! So let's talk about some of the things that happened this holy week that led up to Good Friday. So on Sunday, we celebrated Palm Sunday. Sunday was the time in which Jesus entered the city of Jerusalem riding on a donkey. And this is really symbolic, you guys, because in the Old Testament in the Bible, it talks about the Savior, the Messiah, riding in on a donkey. That will be a sign that the Savior has come. And everyone in town knew that. And so they ran out with palm branches, waving them like this, saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, because they're celebrating that the Savior has come at last. 
And then after that event, we had Jesus, he's doing some temple tantrum he had, where he threw out the Walmart taking place in the middle of the temple, because the temple was a place to uh, worship God, but the people made it into a Publix or a Walmart, into a store selling sacrificial animals. And that's just not good. So Jesus had a little temple tantrum there, upset and angry. Then after that, Jesus started going around hanging out with his friends and teaching the people in the area. So we have some amazing teaching and truth that took place during this time. One of them was the great command, the great commandment of love God and love others. Jesus dropped that truth bomb on the people that day. Also what happened on Wednesday, okay? What happened on Wednesday of this week, Judas, okay, Judas, one of Jesus' best friends, went to the chief priest and agreed to hand Jesus over, betray him for 30 pieces of silver. And so all that was put into motion because here we end up on Thursday, on Thursday when it was time to celebrate Passover. And so before we get to Good Friday, I want us to hunker down and celebrate and read what happens on Thursday because we want to participate now on what happened with Thursday. In the book of Matthew, chapter 26, starting in verse 17, I'm going to read to you guys what this has to say. This story of the Lord's Supper, the Last Supper, them celebrating the Passover, is found in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And you could read along in different accounts of that story, but I'm going to look in, in Matthew, chapter 26. And so if you have a Bible, you can read along with me as I do so. And this is what it says on chapter, verse 17. It was the first day of the Feast of the Eleventh Bread, Passover. The disciples came to Jesus and they asked, where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover meal? Every year they celebrated the Passover meal. Now what's the Passover meal? It's the time where they sit down and remember as a group what God did back in the day with Moses and the Israelites. Remember the angel of death, that last plague? It passed over, passed over the, the Israelites in the death of the firstborn kid. And so, they were celebrating and remembering that time. Actually, a lot of people back in these days had all these feasts and, and celebrations to help them remember what God did. It's kind of cool to, for us to stop and pause to remember the past of what God did. And we celebrate that, which, guess what? We're going to do that in a little bit, okay? Let's keep going. He replied, go into the city to a certain man. Tell him, the teacher says, my time is near. I'm going to celebrate the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did what Jesus had told them to do. They prepared the Passover meal. In verse 20, when evening came, Jesus was at the table with his 12. While they're eating, he said, what I'm about to tell you is true. One of you will hand me over to my enemies. Someone's gonna betray me. So the disciples became very sad. They started crying. One after the other, they began to say to him, it's not I, Lord, it's not, it's not me, it can't be me. We're BFS forever, yeah. But then Jesus replied this, the one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will hand me over. The son of man will go just as it is written about him, but how terrible it will be for the one who hands over the son of man. It would be better for him to have not been born. Oh snap, right? It's been better for him not to be born crazy. And we course, we know who that, that was Judas, right? Judas was the one who was going to hand him over. He said, it's not I, Rabbi. It's not, which is what? A lie. He lied. <laughs> All right. So Jesus answered, yes, it is. <laughs> and then verse 26, we have this part, which we're going to do. While they were eating, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it. He handed it to his disciples and said, take this and eat it. This is my body. What? That's weird. Then he took a cup and he gave thanks and handed it to them. He said, all of you drink from it. This is my blood of a new covenant. It's poured out to forgive the sins of many. Here's what I tell you. From now on, I won't drink wine with you again until the day I, I drink it with you in my father's kingdom. What? Wait, this is my blood, so drink it? What? 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 Weird, right? That's a little bizarre. Eating your body and drinking your blood? What is it? What in the world does that even mean? Well. What Jesus was saying here was, I'm going to give you something, a way to remember about what's going to happen tomorrow. And what was gonna to happen tomorrow? Jesus dying on the cross for our sins. A way to remember what he went through so you can remember and celebrate what he did for you. 
just like in the Passover meal, right? Just like them celebrating, remembering what Moses did way back in the day, remember what God did way back in the day? The same is true with the Lord's Supper here. It's a way for us to remember what Jesus did, which is die on the cross for our sins. His broken body on the cross, it broke, it died. Why? For our sins. He got pierced in the side with a spear. Blood came out. He was a sacrifice that was needed to cover our sins. Sacrifice to cover sins has to be paid with blood. And so Jesus' broken body, his body dying, his side being pierced, blood coming out, him shedding his life, was the sacrifice needed to pay for our sins. And so when we partake in Lord's Supper, some churches call it communion, others call it Eucharist. When we do this, it's an act to remember what God did for us. And so we're going to do that right now. So you kids at church, we're going to do this by using uh, juice boxes like this. Paw Patrol, Paw Patrol, be there on the double. Yeah, I watch Paw Patrol. What's it to you? We're gonna use a juice box and we're gonna use these things called oyster crackers, little crackers like this. And so if you're at home watching this, you could use, if you have juice or water, whatever actually any liquid would do, but we're gonna do some juice here at the church. And if you have any crackers or even bread would work too. If you have an oyster crackers, goldfish, you could use that as well. But here at church, your parents, they use this right here. They call it the communion snack pack which has the juice up here and it has a wafer in the bottom. And so that's what we're gonna use today. Well, right now in this video, I'm gonna use this, but if you're at church, we're gonna use this. If you're at home, you can use whatever you have. So this is what you do first when it comes to this. You first, they'll pass out the bread, all right? The little cracker. And you're gonna take the bread in your hand just like this. And you take it like this and a pastor like myself or someone like, like it, will be up on stage, or, or you could even in your home, you, you open up the scriptures, Matthew 26, and you look at verse 26, and you take this bread, you look at it, and then you read this out loud. While they're eating, Jesus broke the bread. He gave thanks and broke it. He handed it to his disciples and said, take this and eat it, this is my body. And then at that cue, you put it in your mouth and eat it. And while you're doing so, you just have to reflect. You think about in your head, like quietly, about Jesus on the cross, about him dying on the cross and how, how that felt for Jesus. Because remember, he's 100% God, 100% man. So he has these feelings, he experienced pain, which guys, crucifixion, that form of death was the most horrendous, horriblest way to die ever. And Jesus experienced that. And so here we have it, we have the bread. So let's do this now. While they're eating, Jesus broke the bread. He gave it and said, thanks. He handed it to his disciples and said, take this and eat it. This is my body. Next, they might hand out the juice right now or for our snack pack, we just flip it over. Um, but it just depends on what you have available or your cup of water. And so then what you do now is the, the pastor would again take the cup of whatever it is and, and read the scripture verses, which is Matthew 26, 27. Take, then he took the cup, he would raise it up like this. He gave thanks and handed it to them. He said, all of you drink from it. This is my blood of the new covenant. It's poured out to the forgiving of the sins of many. And then after that, you drink it, all right, you drink it. And then again, you reflect on what it just said, that he poured out his blood to the forgiving of the sins of many. And during your reflection time this time, you think of not only Jesus dying on the cross, but maybe think about your sins, which is all the bad things you've done. Think about them and just confess them. Tell them to God in your brain, like, God, I'm sorry I was mean to my brother and sister. God, I'm sorry I stole. Or God, please forgive me of anything we've done, okay, for that moment. So let's, let's, let's try that now. Then he took the cup, so take your juice. He took the cup. He gave thanks and handed to them. He said, all of you drink from it. This is my blood of the new covenant. It was poured out to forgive the sins of many. And then after all that, he would usually, pastor, you would usually pray over what they did. They might pray between each one, the bread and, and the, the juice there. Um, but we're gonna pray right now 
for that. So let's bow our heads and close our eyes and let's just have a time of me praying out loud for what we just did. Father God, I just thank you so much for your example here in the Lord's Supper to help us stop and do this celebration, this action to help us to be reminded of you, God, about what you did through your son, about him dying on the cross. He broke his body so we could be forgiven of sins. He shed his blood so we could be forgiven of sins. Why, God? So we could have a relationship with you, so we could be right with you, and we thank you for that. Every time we do the Lord's Supper, help us remember you and what you did for us. Help us always remember that. God, we love you so much. Amen. After he did this, going back to the actual story here, after Jesus did all this stuff, it says in verse 30, then they sang a hymn and went out on the Mount of Olives. So you guys, let's kind of speed through all this, right? So after Jesus went to the Mount of Olives with his with his disciples, remember, this was late Thursday night now. And so on Thursday night, Jesus here, he went to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. And so here we have on the Mount of Olives and the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus was praying there. Remember, he had his three, one of his three besties out of all the 12, go up there and you stay here. I'm going to go up away and pray. And so he was praying. He's like, can't really bend his feet, but... Jesus, he's like, God, I'm, he was praying like this. And he says, God, please, now, I don't want to do this. I don't want to die because it's going to hurt really badly, but not your will, but not my will, but your will, right? So he prayed that uh, prayer and he got up and then he went down and he saw his friends were sleeping and they're like, oh my gosh, you're sleeping. What in the world? And so he went back right again and he found him sleeping another time. And then he did this three times. And then on the third time, Jesus went down the hill and he said, it is time. Because at that moment, Judas and some Roman soldiers and some Pharisees were coming up the hill in the garden. And Judas walks right up to Jesus and kisses him on the cheek. Like that, kisses him right there. As a way to show that this is the one. So bam, Judas betrayed Jesus late Thursday night. And so after that, Jesus was arrested. He was arrested, right? He was arrested like this, taken away. And uh, he was 
beaten by the guards at that time. He was also then put on trial, not once, but twice. He was put on trial. Each time they couldn't find anything wrong with him. The governor, Pilate, he didn't want anything wrong. He's like, I don't want this responsibility. I'm not, it's not up to me. I don't want to decide this. And so he went in front of the people and the people say, hey, do you want Jesus crucified or do you want this guy named Barabbas? Who do you want? And the crowd, because of the Pharisees are in the crowd, the Sadducees, they kind of made uh, the crowd say Barabbas instead of Jesus. And, and Pilate's like, no, no, not, not Jesus. He didn't do anything wrong. And the crowd just kept getting louder and louder. And because Pilate wanted to be popular, he agreed. And so then Jesus was then taken again and really beaten up, beaten up, and they stripped off his clothes and put a thorn, a crown of thorn on his head, and then they had it put, tied the cross to his back as he had to carry it up this long hill to Gagatha, which means the skull, and there they nailed him to the cross, right here, they nailed his hands to the cross like this, and then they hung him on the cross, they broke his legs, broken body, right, they broke his legs so he couldn't breathe, okay, because when you're on the cross, you're hanging there like this, and you're trying to get air into your lungs. And most of the time people died on the cross from, suff from suffocating because they can't breathe. And so they broke his legs. And so here he is. And it became really dark during this time. People were, were crying down there. I found on the cross. He was on the cross. Uh, you know, people, the soldiers were gambling his clothes away. And you can read all this stuff in the, in the Bible, of course. And then what happened was Jesus yelled out. He cried out, it is finished. And then at that moment, a loud earthquake occurred. The sun got blocked out. And uh, it was just crazy what was happening. And then Jesus he died on the cross. He did. And so they took his body down. They placed him in a borrowed tomb, uh, not his own tomb, someone else's bar. And they put him in there and they rolled a big stone there. And so that speed reading, the speed going over there is kind of what happened on Good Friday. And so if you come back on Sunday, Easter Sunday, you get to hear how the story ends. But I'll give you guys a little hint here. Easter is not just one day. The Easter story, you guys, was started, was planned from the very beginning. And I can't wait to unpack that with you on Sunday at SDF Kids. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching our services. Let's conclude today with another song. So let's sing and dance because yes, it's Good Friday. We're celebrating some sad stuff, but you know what? Worshiping God is always good, no matter what time it is. Because we can worship God in the highest highs and the lowest lows. We can, because worship is so important. Isn't that right, Jesus? Isn't that right? All right. Bye, guys. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye. fail me now you won't fail me now in the waiting the same God who's never late is working all things out you're working all things out yes I will lift you high in the lowest valley yes I will bless your name
and nothing can 